First Timothy chapter number four this morning. First Timothy chapter number four, verse number one and two. Good to see everybody here this morning. I'm very, very serious about this subject, as I was last time I taught on it. But this is a different, different kind of style. Um, there are so many false prophets out there in the world. It would blow your mind if you, knew the, if you knew the truth. It would blow your mind. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. For this hour, will you pray over this message, please? Amen. I want to make something real clear right now before I start. Satan loves religion. Satan loves it. But he hates redemption. He hates the true religion. And he'll, he'll make counterfeit religions to try to counter, kind of counteract the real religion, the real faith. And the Bible talks about that many, many false and demonic spirits are in this world today. As, as we draw closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ, Satan's on the attack, he's on the warfare, he's after your mind, he's after your heart, he's after your soul. And he'll raise up prophets to deceive you, is what the Word of God says. This verse I just read in your presence, these verses are some of the uh, saddest verses in all the King James Bible, but they're biblical reality. Listen to me carefully. There's never been a time in human history where so many are being deceived by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We read those terminologies, but if I find seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, we just read right over it. That is serious terminology Paul is talking about right there. And there's a world, there's a spirit world that people don't even understand. And they, they dabble in it. They mess with it. And before they know it, they're all in a, in a mess and they're out of church and their lives are all messed up. Because they don't stay with the old time ways, like the Bible says. People by the untold thousands are leaving the old time way and are departing from the truth. Notice in these verses, they once were part of the faith. But through deception and through, through other avenues, they left the faith. It's kind of like Demas hath forsaken me. I haven't loved this present world. The Bible says that God, the devil is the God of this world. The Bible says that ye are of your father the devil. And the Bible does say that he is blinding the minds of people all over this world. The Bible says in Revelation, the Bible says that he's deceived the whole world. And we don't give, we, we play around with Satan like he's a friend or he's a cousin or he's a family member. No, he's your enemy. And he's on the attack and he's on the warfare. We're in a war. And it's serious business. Um, for 2 Timothy 3.13 says this, But evil man and men and seducers should wax worse and worse. Paul called them grievous wolves that will come into the church after his departing. And the Bible talks about that. Um, they are men of corrupt minds, Pastor Gunther. It's kind of like in Romans chapter 1 when the Bible talks about reprobate minds. There's different levels to it. There's a seared conscience as well where you can't understand right and wrong. Your discernment is gone at that point. He muddies your mind. A reprobate is totally cut off from God through their actions, through their beliefs, and through their rejection of Jesus Christ, grieving the Spirit. But, bless you, Pastor. 1 John 4, 1 says this, and you ought to underline this verse in your Bible, please. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and now even now is in the world. Jesus said this, Matthew 24, 15, Beware of false prophets, for they come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Strong terminology again. And um, 
The word seduce means a lead astray. A seducing spirit is defined as a lying spirit that take people over and reverse the truth in their minds and spirit and make it seem false. It's a false belief that's presented as truth. It's counterfeit. It's not what the Bible teaches. And that's what Satan's doing all over this country right now. Uh, doctrines of devils simply means a set of principles or teachings contrary to truth and are taught by demonic spirits. Listen to me carefully. Not everybody that stands in a pulpit or carries a Bible is of God. Right. You know, the majority of people in this generation is not of God, honestly, is what the Bible teaches. Uh, and, and this is what I, I'll bring out. Just like God has ministers, Satan himself also has ministers that appear, this terminology, as angels of light. But they operate through a foul spirit that can deceive the masses. You better be careful. You better know your Bible if you're sitting in a church. Don't just take everything a preacher says for, to heart. And don't get caught up in emotions and feelings and, and all these things that lead you away from the truth of the word of God. Rely on the scriptures, rely on the, the Bible over your feelings and emotions, because that's going to lead you down a dark path. Um, I think about this. I know this subject very well. Um, this is what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 12, 11, 13 through 15. Think, listen to these verses. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, that terminology. And no marvel, don't be surprised. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, Brother Rob. Verse 15, therefore it is no great thing that his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. They look good, they smell good, they say all the right things, they know, that they, they know enough Bible to be dangerous, basically. They know how to deceive people. But the Bible says they transform themselves. You look up that word transform, Brother Vipom, they're, they're basically like spiritual zombies. They don't have consciences. They, they don't care about hurting people. They care about their own agenda and their own will and their money and their greed and all the fame and all this other stuff. And Satan has his ministers that deceive people. I, I think of them as spiritual zombies. Um, but that word, that word um, transform means to like metamorphosize, like when the spotlight hits them and they step into that pulpit or wherever they're ministering, they operate through a different spirit. They're like actors. They're not like a, a minister of the gospel. They, they, they have the ability to transform themselves into ministers of light. And they control people through charisma, charm, uh, likability. Uh, they seem righteous. They seem holy. They connect with others emotionally. They, in other words, they know how to say the right thing at the right time in a service. And they get everybody to get on their side where all the time they're the devil. They're, they're, they're working through the devil's spirit. Um, they make people feel good, feel comfortable. They love the applause of men, the approval of men. Satan ministers appear to be righteous, pure, the real deal, loving, caring, gifty, gifted, and someone that can be trusted. But the truth is they are evil, dark, uh, twisted, vile, hypocrites, liars, con artists, manip manipulators, selfish, prideful, greedy of filthy lucre, satanic. Um, actors, faults, deceivers, and they lead people from truth into apostasy. Right. Brother, Brother Shine taught about it a, a few weeks ago about all these, these uh, church leaders that are worth $40, $50 million, $70 million. A, a real minister of the gospel will care for people. Right. They ain't going to care for their own agenda. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And uh, Satan has people all over this country like that, and people are duped. People, and I'll talk about that in a minute with these mega churches. I'll talk about that in a quick second. This is what 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3 says. But there were also false prophets among the people, as there shall also be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, that's the key, they shall make with feigned words, that's great swelling words, they sound good, they're good orators, they shall make merchandise of you. That's what the word of God says. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Their whole agenda is not the will of God. It's to put on a show and manipulate people and, do the, and, and follow their own will. And um, a false prophet minister may say all the right things, carry a Bible, seem to be acceptable, but their goal is to lead others astray, and they will ultimately be out for their own selfish desires, fame, and greed. I thank God we have a man that's not like that. I thank God we have a man that, that preaches the Bible. He doesn't apologize for it. 
and he's the real deal, and, and, and he's a blessing. But not everybody's like him. Um, this is what the Bible says about false teachers. They have eyes full of adultery, cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls as hearts. They exercise with covetous practices, curse children, is what the Word of God says. You need to stop looking at these big-time preachers as somebody that's a blessing. These people are satanic. You know, they're working through a foul spirit. And um, I, I can tell you things that blow your mind about some of these preachers, but I won't. I have a high respect for preachers. You know what I'm saying? I have a high respect for people that really put in the work and are worthy of double honor, the Bible says. But I don't have any problem exposing people that are wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's the Bible tells us to do so. Right. The Bible declares this in 1 Timothy 6.10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, all evil stems from that. There's nothing wrong with having money. David was blessed. Abraham was blessed. All, a lot of men in the word of God. But God can entrust them with money, and they used it the right way for the glory of God. But it comes a problem when you, it's the love of money. When you're consumed with it. When that's all you think about. So the, root of, uh, the Bible says, that for the love of money is the root of all evil, while some covered it after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I'm not against a minister being blessed and having money, but I'm against a minister driven by money and coveting after it. Right. You, know, you know, a man of God should have restraint. You know what I'm saying? Let me just throw this in while I'm here, Miss Jessica. I'm not, I'm not opposed to a man of God being blessed. I, mean, I don't think there's anything spiritual about letting a man of God suffer and struggle his whole life. You know what I'm saying? We should take care of the man of God. But I'm just saying, a, a man that, that prods people and, and tries to coax people into giving all the time to them. You know what I'm saying? It's evil. It's wicked. Right. You know, that's what the Bible teaches. And, and a lot of people are driven by that motive. Um, that is a sure sign of a false prophet and someone not in it for the right reasons. Always remember this. Listen to me carefully. Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 disciples. A trusted man, loved by others, pre um, he could preach, he was religious, had charisma, he was respected by others, even did miracles like the others. But the Bible declares he was a devil from the beginning and never truly was born again. Now, if Judas can do miracles and he's one of the apostles, what do you think these preachers can do? You know what I'm saying? The, these false apostles that Paul's talking about right here. Uh, Ju Judas operated through a satanic spirit, and he's found the only time you find him speaking is when money was involved. The only time he ever opened his mouth is when money was involved. When they wanted to give to the poor, he had, you know, he had stepped forward. And, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, the Bible says. And that's what Judas was controlled. That way I can go deep, deeply into Judas. Um, although he fooled everyone else, Je Jesus knew his heart. And at the end, he was exposed for what he was. And he split hell wide open upon death. Acts 1.25 says this. When Judas died, it don't say this about anybody else in the whole entire word of God in this shine. When Judas died, the Bible said he went to his own place. Now, hell was created for the devil and his angels, and Judas went to his own place, signifying that Judas was satanic. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't in it for the right reason. He was consumed with his own agenda, a lot like these false preachers are. You know, and uh, I could go into that pretty good. Uh, Satan, Satan has power, and just because someone can preach, listen to me. There's people all over this country, my friends, that can preach. They have outlines. They have hundreds of outlines. You know what I'm saying? But it's all a show. It's all, they're like robots. You know what I'm saying? It's not real. It's not from the heart. It, it's just they know, they know how to make the machinery run. You know what I'm saying? They know how to make a service run. They know how to make it go. But they're not really of God. And God will expose them in time. And um, Satan has power. And just because someone can preach and perform miracles, it does not mean they are a, a man of God. Because Judas could do it. And that's, the whole, and that's what the Antichrist will do. And he will deceive the masses. Listen to me. They control you through emotions. They control you through feelings, through miracles. The Antichrist is going to speak to a golden calf and is going to get up and walk around, and people are going to bow down and worship him because they operate through a different spirit. There's a lot of people in this world, in the entertainment world and other worlds, that are operated through a different spirit. That's where they get their strength from. It's from Satan. It ain't from God, you know. Um, Satan offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in Matthew 4 and in Luke 4. If you would just bow down and worship him. But Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And when he said that, Satan departed for a season, the Bible says. The Bible says in Luke 4 that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. But Satan is the God of this world. For some reason, God has given him that authority, small g. God's big g. You know what I'm saying? God's in control of everything. But Satan, for some reason, has control over the way this world runs. You know what I'm saying? This mud ball that we're in, you know. 
And, uh, but but just, just in general, the, the Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Way too many, far too many people, listen to me closely, just roll over and let the devil win. They're not walking in the spirit. They're walking in the flesh. And if you try to fight Satan in the flesh, you're going to lose every time. He's a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You have to learn how to walk in the spirit at all times. You know, um, Satan is the god of this world, and, and although he is not as powerful as God, he is still powerful and can do miracles as well. In Exodus chapter 7, 10 through 12, Aaron stood before Pharaoh for Moses, cast down the rod, and it became a serpent, displaying the power of God. When it happened, Pharaoh called in his wise men, his sorcerers, magicians, and, they threw a, and through a different spirit, they cast down their rods, and they also became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, displaying God's supreme power. But they had the ability to throw down their rods, and they became serpents, just like Aaron did. That tells you what kind of demonic spirit people operate under. Um, Satan is slick. He's subtle. Um, just because a preacher can do miracles, it doesn't mean they're doing it through the spirit of Almighty God. Satan is slick. He's subtle, and he has the ability to trick, to persuade people through signs and lying wonders. Jesus spoke about this a lot. He spoke about an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. That's what the Jews always wanted. When the Antichrist comes, they're going to be seeking after signs. And that's how the, a lot of preachers overtake people through this. You know what I'm saying? That's why our church has, well, we have a pretty good crowd today, but this is why our church has 30 people. You go down the road to a mega church and they got 2,000. People can't handle any truth. They want to feel good all the time. They want to come into church, be comfortable in their sin. They don't ever want to come to an altar. You know what I'm saying? They can't take any kind of preaching whatsoever in this generation. Um, Matthew 24, 20, pastor uses this verse often, Pastor Ammon did, I do pretty often as well, and a lot of preachers I know use this verse often. It should sink in your heart, this verse. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name, they're doing it in the name of Christ, but they're operating through a different spirit. They're trying to trick God like he don't know. You know what I'm saying? In thy, in thy name have we not cast out devils? In thy name done many wonderful works. Then, without hesitation, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Through lies, selfishness, rebellion, sin, immaturity, bitterness, lack of prayer, discernment. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, but I'll stop right there. We don't have any discernment in our Baptist churches no more. You know what I'm saying? We don't know if, there's a, we don't know if somebody's standing up and he's an apostate or he's the real deal. or Because we, we don't study, like in Acts 17, you know, how they study daily. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says search the scriptures daily. We go off what other people teach, and we don't study ourselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're spoon-fed everything, yeah. and we don't put any time in. And in the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman. We don't have no workmen in the Word of God hardly anymore. You know what I'm saying? The Dr. Greens are dying off. All the old-time men of God are dying off. You know what I'm saying? And this young generation's coming on, and they want to feel good all the time. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just it's wicked. Um, because of straightforward, people are leaving the old-fashioned way. The Bible says, seek ye out the old paths. We should be seeking it, Brother Rob, and we're running from it. Seek ye out the old paths. People are leaving biblical preaching churches and joining these mega churches that are springing up everywhere. I might get into this. Mega churches. They run thousands of people who gather together, to he and they're, basic, they're born out of rebellion, basically. You know what I'm saying? They, they leave the way of the truth to go to establish their own righteousness. But it's all selfishness. Uh, these mega churches run thousands of people who gather together to hear about love, 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 sprinkled with joke, joke, joke. You know, that's their message. There's no Bible. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it's just all singing, fleshly music, and a little bit of preaching or speaking, whatever it's considered. After an expended period of fleshly music, and non remember when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments and they were dancing around the golden calf naked? I heard Brother Grosjean talk about the music they were listening to, cause them to do that, the fleshly music um, that, that was going on in the camp. Um, people love going to those churches, listen to me carefully, because it's, it's non-offensive, it's soft preaching, it's where people can slip in and slip out with no responsibility, no concern for truth, no burden, no conviction, and they leave with no answers and no hope. They leave worse go leaving as they do when they came in. There's no, there's no hope. The speakers preach from other versions of the Bible. It's run on emotions, feelings, and powerful in a positive atmosphere where people can soothe their conscience with religion, and they never come to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says people are ever learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
It's a shame. I, 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 pastor, I, honestly, I blame the pastors and I blame the people. The people, the people deserve just as much blame as the pastors. We should be able to spot a wolf a mile away. You know what I'm saying? Paul talked about this very, very clearly. The Bible says that strong meat belongeth unto those that are of full age, discernment. Well, we got people on the milk their whole, I mean, for 50 years of their life, they're on the milk still. But they never grow up. In spirit. When you grow up and you know the Bible, you know that, that thing about counterfeit money? Just study the real thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to study all this other stuff. And, and something inside you, when something's a, in error, will stick out to you. Right. You know? It's, a, it's just that simple. Um, Paul said this in, in 2 Timothy 4.2. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Notice these two phrases. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We don't want doctrine no more. You know, we just want to feel fuzzy all the time on the inside. We treat church as a social hall. You know what I'm saying? This should be like a place where we get filled through the word and we go out into the world and reach the community. You know what I'm saying? And that should be the purpose of the church. You know what I'm saying? I'm not against fellowship. I love it. We have a great church, kind people, great people. I highly commend you for it. I don't come to church for those reasons. It's just, that's the last thing I really come to church for. I come to church to hear the word of God right. and to be encouraged through the Bible. And I want the preacher to knock the bark off me sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, a true man of God will preach the whole counsel of God, and it will be a balance of love and judgment from God's holy word. You know, every message can't be about love all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's very important. Love is a very, very important message. You know what I'm saying? It probably is the most important message in the Bible. But there has to be a balance of judgment as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. The, the, you'll find a lot of verses in the Bible pretty much the same quality of verses that speak about God's judgment as it does his love. You know what I'm saying? There's got to be that balance. The Bible says a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. So all these churches that just preach love, love, love all the time, they're not really telling people the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to tell people to flee from the wrath of God sometimes. You know what I'm saying? He that believeth on his son, um, he that believeth on his son hath life. He that believeth not hath son, life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. We don't want a John the Baptist preaching at us. You know, we want a Joel Osteen. I, I squeezed him in there, but praise God, I wasn't going to. John encouraged me there. Uh, for the time, listen to this verse. For the time will come, we're there right now, when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You know, these mega churches, they're, they're spawned out of lust, out of selfish nastiness, you know, as far as sin's concerned. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just wicked, it's out of hell. And they shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. They make the decision to turn away from truth. You know what I'm saying? If somebody leaves the church, I, I venture to say it's because they've distanced themselves from the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't see Pastor Gunther as a man that preaches to hurt anybody. He preaches straight from the Bible, and I do as well. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who gets up here does it. But there, you can get cold on God. You can get distant. You can get past feeling, the Bible says. And when you get past feeling, nobody can really help you. You know what I'm saying? John the Baptist, people loved him, but people hated him. They cut his head off. You know what I'm saying? It's not really the message. It's people's hearts. You know what I'm saying? The, your hearts become dark if you're not pliable to the Spirit of God. And um, for, so, where am I? Mega church. Praise the Lord. I'm still in mega church. Mega churches are as all the people and ministers turning from the truth and walking after their own flesh, and it's unbiblical in every way. Noah stood for truth and preached truth, uh, and preached the truth, and people hated his message. But God called him a righteous man and a hero of the faith. You know, in ministry, I talk to young people all the time about this, and uh, and some older folks as well. They get in competition with other people. Yeah, you know I'm saying in ministry, never do that. Enoch walked with God, and he wasn't concerned with everybody else. Yeah, you know I'm saying he was concerned about pleasing God. The Bible says he pleased God. When you start getting in competition with people, you're going to start getting bitter, unforgiving, hateful, things like that. And um, who cares what the mega churches are doing down the road? You know, I couldn't give a rip. You know? Noah had his family get on the ark. That was it, Pastor. And he was a hero of the faith. Jeremiah preached for 52 chapters. You don't find anybody being converted in 52 chapters, but he was a hero of the faith. You know what I'm saying? It's what sort it is. It's not about numbers. You know, we should all have a heart to go after as many people as possible. Jesus said he wants us to be fishers of men, but not at the cost of compromising truth. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
It's far more important to walk in the spirit and the power of God and have just a handful of people who love God and his word than to walk in the flesh and have thousands. Real ministers will point you to Jesus and the cross every time. False prophets will focus on everything else except the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said in Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, For I have determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul, as a minister of the gospel, gave his life for others and pointed people to Christ, whether it was popular or not. People try to be popular in the pulpit. You know what I'm saying? They, they're, not, they're more concerned with what people think than to do in the will of God. I, I, when I get in the pulpit, I have the mindset, if you like the message, that's a blessing. If you don't, that's a blessing. I don't care. My, my job is to preach truth. That's what I'm supposed to do. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I mean, it's almost like medicine. You just got to take it. You know what I'm saying? If you want to grow, you just got to take it. I, just, I promise you, I don't preach to be mean. You know what I'm saying? I'm preaching what God tells me to preach, you know, and he gives me this. Um, and pastors the same way. I mean, we just need to hit altars in our churches. You know, we need to get back to making the altar our friend instead of our distant enemy or whatever we make it, you know. Um, but listen to this. Paul said this about false preachers in Galatians. You better mark this down in your Bible and, and just in general. I marvel that you are so removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which ye have preached unto you, let him be accursed. I will define this word in a second. As we said before, so I say again, he repeats himself again because it's so important. If any man preach any other gospel unto you that you have received, let him be accursed. A curse means you're doomed. It means you're damned. It means you're under a curse. That's what the Word of God teaches. In 2 Corinthians 11, 4, Paul says Satan's ministers preach another gospel and another Christ, another Jesus, and they remove people from the truth. Paul said, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? You know, they were, they were, they were at a point in Paul's ministry where they were going to pluck their eyes out for the apostle Paul. They loved him so much. But they can't take truth. The next verse, they wanted to stone him and kill him. You know what I'm saying? Right. And when Jesus came back, the Bible says Jesus, in his earthly ministry, he came to his own hometown. And the Bible says that he said gracious words, non-offensive, smooth words, but he was preaching through the power of God, through the Spirit of God. And they wanted to take him off on the brow of the hill and throw him off the hill. You know, people just can't take truth. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like when he preached in John chapter 6 and 30,000 people were following him, Ms. Shine. In one public message, 30,000 people, it went down to 12 that quick because they couldn't take any truth. They were following him for the miracles, for the fish, for the bread, for selfish, selfish motives all the time. And that's what the hearts of people in the churches is all around this country. They don't go for the right reasons. When Jesus was on the cross, only his mother and John the Beloved and a handful of women were with him. All the other ones forsook him. You know what I'm saying? It, it'd blow your mind if you knew why people really come to church. You know? Um, John, or John said this, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Jesus said, sanctify him through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Right. Everything should be funneled through the word of God. Right. All of I, do, I, do, I, I believe with all my heart, if you try to, you can't have discernment when you're thinking emotionally and with feelings and all that. You got to go with facts. You got to go with, we, you got to take that out of the equation. And because people, these deceivers can, can trick you through your feelings, through your emotions, and that's how this generation is. It, it's everything, they don't want anybody telling them any kind of truth. Right. Everything's offensive. Yeah, you know I'm saying? And the word of God is offensive. It's a two-edged sword, the Bible says. It cuts. Yeah, that's, that's its purpose. Um, and I, I'm, about, I'm just about done. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The simple truth this morning is that we are in a place where the Bible is preached, Christ is glorified, and his spirit is here. And I'm not interested in skits, programs, fleshly singing, and watered-down preaching. Give me old-fashioned, leather-long, red-hot, fire-breathing, spirit-filled, sin-killing, heaven-sent preaching that offends my flesh, makes me uncomfortable, and brings me to the altar of repentance. I've sat under some of the greatest preachers, brother, and, and you have too. Amen. My greatest memories of church is when God hit me broadside and I went to an altar. Yeah. Not when somebody is saying smooth things to me. You know what I'm saying? I want to know the truth. Even if I'm not living it, I appreciate a man that's going to tell me the truth. 
you know what I'm saying? And I think that's everybody in here. And um, we should thank God we have a church where we can worship in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24 says this, God is a spirit and they shall worship me, must worship me in spirit and in truth. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you can't have one without the other. They have, if you're in a church where you feel the spirit, you say, but it's not matching up with the Bible and it's not truth, then you're wrong. You're in error. You know what I'm saying? They match up naturally, you know? And um, it takes both spirit and truth to gain the approval of God upon a service, and one doesn't work without the other. Paul was warning the world in Timothy about the danger of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and be very aware of how they operate. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for, Lord, just who you are, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for getting up on a resurrection morning, Lord.